think I do see a food cart too though. Travel lift. We're gonna go, this is Canal 2 where we wanna be and we're gonna get there according to Philip. I paid some, but temporarily. Maybe we'll go over here to Canal 1 and dock on up. And we'll be ready to rinse this boat, get some food and a shower. Sailing our Niagara 35 across the Gulf of Mexico to Cuba definitely called for mojitos. Follow along as we walk you through the entire customs process as we checked in. We'll show you who boarded the boat and what they wanted to know. We'll also deal with an engine issue there at the customs dock. I kid you not, it is still a boat. <laughs> and show you a lesson we learned in solving the furling issue we had while sailing into Marina Hemingway. And finally, we set foot and begin to explore this beautiful, untouched country. One piece of advice I wanted to share right out of the gate, and it was Philip's idea and worked really well for us. We made copies of all of our documents, passport, vessel registration, proof of insurance, and just some helpful items here like a marina map and uh, requirements for getting into the country. And we put them in a binder, waterproof sleeves, and used it often. It was so handy during check-in to have everything all in one place. Although we tried to hail the marina on channel 77 many times on the advice of friends that their radios are just too poor to hear us, we went ahead and sailed on into the customs dock. We're really like five miles out and nobody will talk to us in Cuba. Kind of need permission to enter so we may have to bob around for a little bit. That's kind of what happens when you come to a new country, you just kind of figure it out as you go. But the folks in Cuba didn't seem to mind at all that we didn't call before we entered, and they were super nice in helping us get tied up and secured at the dock. Oh, honey, how you feel? I feel great. I like my legs, I definitely feel like I'm still wobbly, rocking and rolling. Wobbly. Even more so than when we were uh, crossing the plane. Oh, really? Once we were tied securely at the customs dock, the first official to board the boat was the doctor. Working good. Working good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> The first I could please. Right, yeah. And we have a second okay. one. Do you want both? Or? Let's do that one. Uh, in this uh, first I did, do you have any narcotics? No. In the boat, there is no narcotics? No narcotics. Okay, yeah, I got you. Okay. Ladies, yes. <laughs> yes. Well done. Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Everybody's well. Everybody's well. Okay. Uh, we do have refrigeration, but uh, we did not. We just turned it on, so it's just a few things. Okay. Any of these foods have a at least also expiration date? Uh, All are fresh. No, no, I don't think so. More recently. All expiration. More recently in Pensacola. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Once the doctor confirmed we were healthy and hadn't brought anything harmful into the country, they took the captain into the customs office to verify his passport and vessel registration. I am uh, waiting on the boat. Philip just went in with the immigration people. And uh, they're so nice. They're really friendly. Just, uh, como esta? Buenos dias. You know, Hola, welcome to our country. Uh, it's so fun to see him excited to, to welcome us. And it's beautiful here. I'll give you a little 360. Check it out. It's a palm tree. 
trees, lots of colors. I've got a lot of colors. The buildings are so bright. Teals, purples, salmon. It's just gorgeous. This is the um, customs place, and we're getting all checked in. Doctor checked us out, and immigration checked us out. And I go next to the secluded office where they interrogate us alone. It's so fun. And turns out they didn't interrogate us, just stamped our passport at our request. Which Video Annie was a little too excited about. <laughs> got their passport stamped! It's Cuba! Cuba! The next official to board the boat was the customs officer who just needed us to fill out some information for our visas, which are handled through the marina. Everybody needs to fill out this form and this visa. We were then assigned a slip on Canal 1, but on the advice of friends, Philip had requested we be moved to Canal 2, closer to the facilities. So it was just time to crank the engine, toss the lines, and get to our slip. But that didn't happen. Plaintiff's Rest had one more trick in store for us. <laughs> Always something. Okay, Chief mechanic. Just a, oh, careful. Just one little wire, huh? <laughs> Maybe you didn't reconnect it right, so it's not a bad sign. Initially, we did find a connection to the starter that was loose, and we were hoping that was it. Maybe you connected it to the wrong spot? No, it just kind of slips over this little piece. But maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's not getting a good connection somehow. Maybe it's just getting a partial connection last time. Our slip at Marina Hemingway. <laughs> and Plains Rest wants to just act up just a little, just to show who's boss. She most definitely is. Always, always. So our chief mechanic, Philip, is on it. Yeah, it's real corroded. Okay, I can get the cleaner and wire brush and stuff. Yeah. We're gonna solve this problem. We're getting to our dock, damn it. I'm getting a mojito today, Plains Rest. I don't care what you say, girl. I love you, but you ain't stopping me. Cause you made me promise and promise. Alright, I need this fixed. Always. My finger is. See how it. That's the one. That's the one that came up last time. Yeah, see how corroded it is. Yeah. So that was alright. There. Needs to get it cleaned up. Back on. And it could be in business. Uh -huh. Woohoo. Okay. Just the one you think? I don't think it's a battery problem. I think it's an engine problem. times on plaintiff's rest but with our engine running we were ready to toss the lines and get to our slip here we go off to our slip great de-docking by the captain how you like that engine that engine <laughs> plaintiff's rest you're, trying to test you're me. so funny you funny girl you're trying to test me <laughs> She's like, let's play with the captain today. This will be fun. We called this bunch here the Welcome Committee because they came to every new boat that docked at the marina. The first officials to board were from the Agricultural Department. Yes. They were also very courteous and just wanted to know if we had brought any perishable foods or live plants into the country. Uh, any beef? No beef. No beef? Eggs? No eggs. You need the What's that? You need you eat inside the boat, not okay. outside. Okay. This is no problem. Okay. Inside the boat, it's, it's okay. 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 And I'm sure you remember all of the goodies, snacks, candies, chocolates that we had brought in for the Cubans. Here's where that came in handy. Well, 
One more finish. And you sure you know no snack or drink or soda? Uh, or if, if you have any tip for us, it's better. Okay. You don't have to do, but you want, yeah, I appreciate. Yeah, we've got, yes, Danny, yeah. no, we've got. The Cuban situation, economic Cuban situation. Anything you like, cold spice, candy, cookies. I made bags for you, actually. Un regalo a usted. But it's not done. It's candies and toys and food, you know, anything you like, please. And uh, maybe they like some food. Hey. Feliz Navidad! Uh, Feliz Año Nuevo. Oh, thank you. Happy. Muchas gracias. New Year. Merry ah, Christmas. Then it was time to meet our favorite new friend, Jose the Dock Master. May I come in? Yes. Uh, un, un momento. Okay. And, yes, please. Muy no problem. I win. <laughs> uh, Se llama? Jose. Jose. Dock Master Jose. I have something for you. Me? Oh, we have a, <laughs> our friend, uh, Captain Ryan comes Captain here. Ryan. Oh, Captain Ryan. Yeah, tell him we want Captain Ryan and we to be behind us. And we made him make a slip behind for us. him. He's coming uh, December 27th. Uh, he told us to look for you. Well, he told us to be gay. He said, oh, you're right yeah, there. Jose said, oh, you want yeah. Jose? <laughs> Jose. And he said, Jose, been yeah. gay. <laughs> so we can remember. <laughs> Jose was also very helpful in giving us a lot of great um, local tips about sometime, exchanging sometime, money, finding a sometime, driver, sometime. cooks versus pesos, all of that. What Jose is talking about here is the money exchange rate, which is typically 85%. But we went through a friend of his and were able to exchange ours for 90%. Jose was awesome in offering tons of great tips like this. I've included many of them in my blog post titled Customs in Cuba at HaveWindWillTravel.com, including as well the exact expense and cost to stay at the marina. So definitely go check that blog post out if you're interested and want more details. Now, this is for you. I have one more. The passport okay. and, and documentation of the boat. Anything you'd like. We have all sorts of goodies. We like very much too. Jose and the entire team at the customs office that welcomed us to the country were incredibly polite, courteous, and just very easy to deal with. Philip and I were super excited to have our boat finally docked at Marina Hemingway. Before we set off to explore Cuba, we just had one more chore to finish on the boat. I want to share with you all as well a lesson we learned when we had an issue furling our head sail on the way into Marina Hemingway. If you recall, you okay? the line was too taut, it was either caught or tangled, and Philip had to go topside and furl the Jenny by hand. Once we were able to pull the head sail out at the dock and inspect the furling drum, we found that the line was actually just cinched and pinched down on itself. That's the reason it wouldn't pull and furl the sail up. After talking with some friends, it was actually Captain Ryan with Sail Libra who suggested we keep light pressure on the furling line while the sail comes out. The best way I can describe this is just holding your thumb on a fishing reel while the line is going out so it doesn't bird nest. Applying a little bit of pressure on the spool on the line when you're actually casting. If I don't spool it, that's exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to get a little bit of a bird nest. So thumb those reels. Once we figured that out, the rest was supposed to be easy, but it seemed we had one more lesson to learn. Does anyone see a problem here? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. We pulled all of the furling line out of the drum and then raised the sail. Oh God, really? <laughs> We're so dumb. I guess drop the Jenny real quick. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thankfully, it was an easy chore. We dropped the Jenny again, wrapped the furling line around the drum, and hoisted her back up, and got her furled up and ready to go for our next adventure. But first, it was time finally to set off on foot. We were about to take Cuba by storm. Come along, stroll the streets of Cuba with us.
This was probably one of our favorite places in Cuba. It's called the Hamanitas District, and it's just a short walk from Marina Hemingway, but we really felt like it gave us a local, authentic flavor of what life every day looks like in Cuba. And this was our new Canadian friend, Alan, who spends three months every year living in the Hamanitas district. And he definitely gave us an awesome locals tour. Alan took us to a little local restaurant that is just in the back patio of someone's home. And it was delicious and super affordable. You know, I've got to know a lot of little kids and stuff. One other place Alan said we had to go the first day in Cuba oh was Fusterland. It is an enormous, colorful, ceramic tile art studio built around its artist and creator, Jose Fuster. Absolutely free and a marvel to walk through. Pretty amazing, right? Next time, we will hitch a classic car ride and give you a tour of historic Havana. But first, we're gonna take you to the Tropicana. Porque es un mal 